we didn't exactly shut down in the sense that we, we immediately just heavily leaned upon our broadcast streaming ministries. Uh, people began, though, to just naturally congregate at the church outdoors in the courtyard. They just wouldn't mm-hmm. stop. Right, right. Couldn't uh, stay away. Couldn't stay away. <laughs> and great. so um, in my just my private devotional time, I was actually, I can't even tell you what, what book I was reading at the time, but I can tell you this, that on, on, on a very clear, specific morning, the Lord spoke to my heart. I didn't hear lightning and thunder happening. I didn't hear his voice audibly. I didn't have to. There was this incredible revelation to my spirit. Jack, I've set before you an open door that no man can shut. No man has the authority to shut the doors of my church. Now, I took that several ways. I took that as a direct challenge and an exhortation to me, but I also took it as a, as a, a direct rebuke to Gavin Newsom, who was vehement about keeping churches closed, famously so. I think he's got, uh, you know, really the title now of being the most anti-Christ uh, governor during the COVID experience. But we made it clear to him that we were opening up with all due respect to the office. We did all kinds of precautions. We did everything uh, that we could that we could possibly do. But what we didn't realize is that our church, we thought that we were a big church at 10,000 people prior to COVID, after COVID, uh, we grew by at least 5,000 people in person. Oh my goodness. We baptized, listen, during COVID, we baptized 3,014 people in the Pacific Ocean, each one, one by one. Wow. We had to recruit pastors from some other churches. And um, since that time, the viewership, everything about it, God has seen fit to catapult his truth further. Mm. So we're coming up on Pentecost Sunday again, and we're launching... Uh, the Real Life Network, and that comes out of being canceled, it comes out of being uh, censored, it comes out of the pandemic, where we learned, you know what, how do we circumnavigate high-tech and government encroachment, and that's why we invented the network, so we can just go 24-7, 365. Pastor Jack Hibbs joining us today here on the Meeting House on Faith Radio from Calvary Chapel of Chino Hills, California, here at the National Religious Broadcasters 2023 Convention in Orlando, Florida. So you talk about the real life network and circumventing high tech. Let's talk about the conditions. This this is something, as you mentioned, grew out of COVID. Mm-hmm. We're seeing where in this culture today, and it's it's very gratifying to look around this exhibit oh, yeah. hall. We kind of have a panoramic view here with our display area, with our booth, and you have a, a wonderful setup out in front of the exhibit hall. And so we get to see all of these Christian communicators, all entrusted with sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we also recognize there are forces at work yeah. to basically shut down sure. the proliferation of the message of the gospel. So when you talk about the the high tech challenges and really leveraging tech for the sake of the gospel, yes. what does that mean? How does that work for you and the Real Life Network? Yeah, exactly. So well put. Um, so by creating a a network of your own, we have. Uh, we have a normal functioning television network and it's licensed in Hawaii. We are, we are also Kalo TV on the Hawaiian Islands. We are the only Christian full-time television program that covers or network that covers the Hawaiian Islands. We have leveraged that license and we took that learning curve that we experienced in Hawaii and we wound up creating the network And again, COVID really, really prompted us to get to it. The beautiful thing is, this is what's fun about it, is during COVID from all around the world, people were tuning in and God just blessed. So we understood that the the resources that were coming in, we took it as a a Joseph type of responsibility. So Hmm. we are gonna take these funds. What's happening? People from around the world are watching the gospel. Okay, then what does God want us to do with these resources? Turn around and get the gospel back out, but this time make it safe, as safe as possibly uh, you can do regarding tech. 